Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I'm Kizma and today is part one of three parts of how to exist around other humans. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Hello there, Nick. Hashtag humans. Hashtag humans. What's going on with your human? My human's doing good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, I'm, I'm really excited for uh, for some different things, you know, mm-hmm. some, some like new projects and stuff like that. And uh, my overall, my human is doing well. Yeah. 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 You've had kind of a change of chapters, which maybe we'll talk about in some episode coming up. But We'll it's, get to it. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it's good. It's really good. Well, maybe we should share with our listeners why we decided on this topic of how to exist around other humans. I think if you've been following us, you probably had a little chuckle when you saw the title or heard the title. Um, I know for me, it just sort of popped in. I was like, well, let's talk about this because as we look out globally and even in communities, certainly on social media, there seems to be a lot of polarization between people. And it's either you agree with me or you don't agree with me. And it becomes pretty intense. And then that sort of energy or confrontation or non-agreement, or let's just call it attachment to what we want, can really create some crunchiness around just being around other people, which doesn't need to be so. Just frustration, conflict, resistance, avoidance, none of it really good, connective, healthy Mm -hmm. things, you know, And, and there's not a lot, I don't personally see a ton of those really healthy, connected conversations going on, Mm -hmm. you know, um, there is certainly, uh, no shortage of conflict. Right. But lots of conflict, but at the same time, like along with that is that is the cancel culture, you know, like we're getting rid of you, you know, like that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and some other like iterations of that, that I just think are, it makes it, hard. It just puts up like one more barrier to really what we're going to talk about in the next next episode is just authentic communication, Mm -hmm. honest communication in a loving way, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I I think it's a really important conversation and it, and it ties in and you'll see in a few different ways. It ties in with the last episode that we did of the four agreements, which is actually the fifth agreement. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's some things that overlap here that I think are really, really relevant. And that will be a really good resource for you to go back to, to check out and yeah. to, I think, really get grounded in this conversation and get grounded in it in yourself because, you you know, you can't really avoid other humans I mean, you can, but it's not a very fun and fulfilling, like we're hardwired for connection. You yeah, know? we are. And I think there's different levels of it, right? Some of us, like me, love being alone at times. We need space. I think everybody needs space, yet we don't necessarily take space when we're not around people. We take up technology, we take up TV, totally. we take up social media. So I think that's an important differentiation. If you're hiding from other people, it doesn't mean you're getting the kind of quality space that your mind and your body and your soul really needs. Yeah. So there can, and and we're coming out of, you know, Armageddon where there's been like so much reclusiveness. And I think many of us, I mean, myself, I can speak for myself. I don't know if anybody else out there, but I think many of us got used to being secluded and kind of withdrawn and, and got used to that. And that's not necessarily a formula to, like you said, have that connection and and to thrive as human beings together. Yeah. Yeah. And you bring up a really good point about the internet at large. 
where it's so easy to hide behind a screen name uh, or hide behind the screen itself and just mm-hmm. behind the anonymity of the, or the distance between mm-hmm. you and that other person, you know, that it, it, yes, it's, it's, it's good. Like there's a lot of gifts that come along with that, but at the same time, it doesn't, it, it's, it's different than how we're interacting in, mm-hmm. with people in a, in a, face to face, you know, and and out in out in the wild, so to speak. Or community. I, you know, there was a time in my life shot that I lived in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Zoe was born in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's so wild to see that on her passport. I know it's so funny. And there was uh, someone wrote a book who uh, Lincoln's coming up because I think the author was from Lincoln, and it was I can't remember the name, but it was a great book. And you know, it was back in probably the late late nineties. But they said, you know, we've lost the culture of sitting on our front porch and just saying hi to our neighbors. Remember my grandma, my grandma used to have uh, chairs on the front porch. Yeah. I remember going out there yeah. in the evening and, and we'd sit with her and she'd sing funny songs sometimes. But um, I don't know, it's a weird memory. But uh, but I remember that, like that was yeah. a thing. And you'd wave to the guy across the you'd street. Wave. Hey. You knew your neighbors. I That's mean, right. we're really fortunate. We're in a cul-de-sac and we kind of wave to people and see them and Everyone's really cool, but I think that there's been such a retreat and, you know, you can email us and let us know if this speaks to you, but I think a lot of it comes from, we can take on one, I don't really like that person, or they think differently, or they, you know, they vote for this party and we vote for this party. And there's, there's a whole array of reasons that we might not want to exist around other human beings. At the end of the day, we get to choose. You have a right. You have your own human jurisdiction. You do not need to like people. You do not need to agree with people. You don't need to be around them. But I think we need to learn to coexist. Yeah. And and what to me, what this series is really about is you maybe you have your inner circle of people Mm -hmm. that's quite small, which I think personally, I think is really appropriate. Like Mm -hmm. there's not, there's not so many people in that real inner circle, you know, that, that Mm -hmm. know you in that way and that you share with in that way. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's having the confidence and the ease really Mm -hmm. to step outside of that circle and to still just be you, you know, full on out and to, to be able to deal, deal with whatever those hashtag humans are doing and, and not have it take you down. Yeah. Because what your hashtag human is doing might be something that is crunchy to someone else. There's always that. (laughs) No, it's never me. It's never me. So for this part, part one, the main theme was respect. And I really want to hand this over to you, Nick, because you had this on, it, it was a segment that was on your Instagram that I listened to. And I was like, that's really good. Where did that come from? And so just kind of take it away and talk about respect in the way that that you did on that and a little bit further. Well, quick aside is a shout out to getting help. Like there's a there's a lady who's helping me with this. Uh, poor v. Poor v. She's, She's amazing. amazing. And so I do have all of this hidden content that's, mm-hmm. you know, some of it's behind it, you know, it's in part of courses and things like that. And, uh, and just kind of hiding out all over the place. And poor is amazing. Cause she'll go back and find these mm-hmm. things and then cut them so that they'll fit into yeah. those. So things. if you need help with Instagram, just reach out. We to know us. somebody. Hello She's amazing. at illuminationpodcast.com. Yeah. But so that's where that came from. It came from, uh, it came from the course in Mm self-love, right? Which is- That's your flagship training, right? It's such a great training. It it, it Mm -hmm. is. It's like the one, if I could, if I could have my wish and just have everybody go through one training of mine or one thing that I've ever done, it would, it really would be that because- It covers so many bases about just dealing with your own human, dealing with what's going on inside of you and really being able to express yourself in the world with freedom and with ease and with joy. Mm. So that, that particular piece about respect comes from the first foundation, which is self-respect. Okay. Mm. But this extends, right? That's the beauty of the whole work is that if it's going on inside of you, then it's happening in your world too, Mm -hmm. right? So everything that you learn about yourself is directly applicable to your relationships with other people as well. So self-respect, right? Or respect in general. And the most, I think one of the most important things here is flipping the script on it. Mm -hmm. Because we have an old story about you got to earn it. Mm, you have, you have to, to earn respect. You have to earn respect and you got to, you know. That is an old story. And people will withhold respect 
out of habit or just out of, you know, what they've been taught, mm-hmm. kind of waiting for somebody to earn it, like right? waiting for them to step in, right? And that's just one more wall that yeah. gets put up or one more barrier hurdle, mm-hmm. you know, that just makes it less accessible to really be able to have a heartfelt connection or a meaningful connection, a useful connection. Mm-hmm. And I invite everybody to, to entirely flip that a total 180 on its head. And that is that everybody is deserving of respect. That's really good. But you start with that as your default. That's an incredible foundation to start with. It really is. And when you look then at the things that people do to destroy that with you, here's the funny part. It's really easy to say, well, it's because they did this and this and this. But the truth of the matter is that it's your judgment of that Mm -hmm. that destroys that respect. That's actually not coming from them. That's coming from you. And it's a decision you make about respecting another human being. Right. So this foundation of respect is so important because it sets the stage for healthy communication. And it sets the stage for treating others and treating yourself in a, in a whole new way. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I love to do is to just get way outside of the box Mm -hmm. of what you think is possible with that. And if you were to imagine for yourself, just like take a second for yourself and imagine what would it be like for you if you treated yourself, let's just start with you. If you treated yourself with absolute respect, Mm -hmm. complete and total respect, nothing but respect, respect, honor, right? Real reverence for who you are as a human being. That's pretty powerful. Or maybe for what you are as a human being. What you are as a human being. So if you start with that, you direct it to yourself organically, innately, you can't help but have that as a starting platform when you engage with other people. I think so. Yeah. Because you're seeing them for their own divine. If you're seeing that in you, truly, then you're seeing that in them or you're willing to see that in them. Right. And I think if you really take the journey with it too, is you recognize just how damaging disrespect is. Mm -hmm. Like it's so And we go there quickly, right? It's like a slice of words. It's, um, and the assumptions are really bad when someone assumes, oh, you're doing this to me. Oh, you know, it's all those assumptions and stories that people get into that are really coming from ego. Yeah. They're really coming from ego and attachment instead of like a clean slate and allowing everybody to have their human jurisdiction that they have and to live life the way that they're living. Respect yourself, respect others. You don't have to like them. You don't have to agree with them. Yeah. There was something that you said as well around this respect, and I bet we'll touch on it in the next um, two two sessions too, or, or two podcasts, but it was like that we tend to focus on what is different mm. in other people rather than what is the same. Don't you think? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy to look at somebody and, and, you know, you look different from me, you know, you're different gender, you, you know, um, you, you think differently, you have different styles than me, you know, mm-hmm. you, you operate really differently. It's easy to look at that and see all the differences, but you forget about those human things that really are shared experiences mm-hmm. and, and just how I personally have only ever seen that there is so much more in common. I think it's in the Netherlands. I saw a short story about it where there's a human library. Oh, wow. So you go into the library and you can like check out a human, right? Mm. And and you hang out with this other human for another hour or <laughs> half an hour or whatever. And you ask them questions and you talk to them, you know, in these really diverse kind of circumstances. And you realize how much you have in common. Wow. If and there was a- did that. That would was be it, incredible. And was it Heineken that did the, uh, they did an ad. Oh, it was brilliant. They did an ad and then they did a whole experience. Hey, sit down and have a beer with me. I think it was Heineken. If I'm getting it wrong, I'll- I'll make sure that the the proper mm-hmm. uh, commercial gets posted in the um, I- in the podcast page. Mm-hmm. Sit down and have a beer with them, and they pick these really diverse people, mm-hmm. and they sit down and have a beer with one another, and their feelings about one another shifted radically. I bet 
and it and it comes from that open place, right? I, I love mm-hmm. the idea of kicking kicking back and having a beer with somebody, right? It's, it's yeah. just such a kind of a you know quote unquote normal thing, you know. It's just like an everyday yeah. sort of Our uh, coffee sort or tea. Of, if yeah, you don't yeah, drink, yeah, yeah, like whatever that is, you mm-hmm. know. But you sit down and, and you and you just hang out with this the, person. The the common ground of having just a beverage with someone, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. sharing what what everyone needs, whether it's alcohol or not. Everyone needs some sort of sustenance in life. And so when you share that, you might be able to open the door and see what's similar. Yeah. I think it's true. Like if we were just to imagine neighbors who maybe one person is like adamant about gun control in a certain way and the other one is on the polar opposite and that's all they can see Yeah. instead of seeing each other's children, each other's parents, each other's pets, like you could focus on so much that is similar and then maybe be able, you know, it comes back to that need to be right. When we're so digging our heels in, no one has a chance to hear it. No one has a chance to understand it because when we're digging our heels in, we're against them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're against them instead of being for some sort of respect. Yeah. It's like, it's like when they, you're, you hit the nail on the head. That's all they see. And then the disrespect that comes from that, mm-hmm. that person is stupid. That person mm-hmm. is crazy. Like the ridicule and it, that's, that's slung online is, mm-hmm. I mean, I really feel like it's dehumanizing. It is. And it's not just dehumanizing to the people that, you know, not that our audience would ever do that, but when you see it out there, it's not just the person who's saying those things mm-hmm. that's dehumanizing the other. They're dehumanizing themselves yeah. because they're literally treating that person like an animal. Yeah. You know, like that's all they are is this one thing mm-hmm. and this one belief. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there's no shortage of bad behavior online. Like I'm not saying any of that's okay or mm-hmm. or right or, or anything like that. But what I am saying is it, is it truly it is no cause to disrespect somebody. Yeah. Here's the other thing. Thing though, if you want to respect, like hold that respect of here's a human being, let's say you're scrolling on Facebook and I've done this and someone posts something, you're like, damn, that really triggers me. I am done. Just snooze them or unfollow them or unfriend them and let them go off and be their whatever. But if you keep looking at it and keep growling at it, you're, you're kind of, you're disrespecting your own space. Yeah. And then you're disrespecting because you want their opinion to be different. Just like unfollow. Totally. Just let it go. Like pour your energy into another direction. Hey, but have the extreme ownership of it, right? Mm-hmm. It's not you. It's me. It's me. <laughs> I don't like what you're posting. I'm annoyed. So God bless you. I'm going to unfollow you. Yeah, that's me. I can't, you know, I, it's mm-hmm. my, it's my inability to deal with mm-hmm. that. And I think that's really fair. You know, like I, I think it's, it not we only have is our it, tipping point. Exactly. Yeah. We have our tipping point. So and that's part of that is respecting your own, your own boundaries for mm-hmm. those things. And that's not boundaries of like, I don't like that. You know, I don't want anything to do with it. That's your boundaries of what you can handle. Yeah. You know? So I want to get into just a few tips, um, tools, so that our listeners have something to walk away with because you started with respect yourself. What are three things that you would encourage our listeners to do to just lavish more self-respect towards their own being? Well, in the course, one of the biggest things that we deal with in that module is uh, healing guilt and shame. Oh man, those are heavy things. The reason that those are so important is because it puts, what those do is they put up barriers that one, hide who you really are. Mm -hmm. You know, the shame is like just a big old wet blanket kind of that you just put all over everything, you know, and and, then you hide, people hide behind that, right? That what is shameful things are, Mm -hmm. are hidden, you know, through behavior, they're hidden through um, your decisions, right? To, to try and hide those parts that are really vulnerable for you and cleaning that up, right? Because if you have a lot of shame, Mm -hmm. it's very difficult to respect yourself for one. Mm -hmm. uh, And secondly, is you'll project that onto other people. Right. Okay. So in this context, we're talking about other people in that course, we're really, really talking about mm-hmm. you, but it, you'll, you'll, you'll never really have a true sense of respect if you carry a lot of shame. Yeah. And guilt is really important because of the defensiveness. Oh man, that defensive behavior is rough. Yeah. You feel bad. You feel yeah. like some, you feel like you did it wrong or you yeah. got it wrong. And so then you, f- you know, flip away over to the other side and it's all of a sudden, you, you know, you got to be right. Mm-hmm. And then you're proving yourself mm-hmm. and you're getting into this whole crunchy, uh, uh, heavy, sharp, 
uh, conversations around proving yourself in, in a forceful and willful way. Mm-hmm. And, and it I, depletes energy. Yeah. And think about it. Okay. Let's think about it from, uh, from the, from like the standpoint of influence. Mm-hmm. Okay. And just think for yourself, listener, when was the last time that you were deeply influenced by somebody who just talked at you and talked over you and tried to prove themselves yeah, yeah. to you. You're just like, think again, about you it. found it difficult to exist around that person. Yeah, it's <laughs> because it's, it's like a brace, man. It's really aggressive. Yeah. Like there's nothing fun about that and there's nothing really connective about it. So if you really do want to have an impact and an mm-hmm. influence on other people in a positive way, right? It, you have to do that with respect right? and you have to take the defensiveness out of it. And that defensiveness comes from guilt complexes and those guilt complexes. I can't even tell you like the things that we uncover in that course, mm-hmm. because it's so insidious mm-hmm. and it's, it's so kind of contagious, right? And contagious. And it's just, it, 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 it's got these little tendrils into so many different uh, behaviors and patterns and mm-hmm. things like that. It, it really mm-hmm. is a powerful thing. So when you can shake that loose, like you, you're actually, you don't, you don't feel like you have to defend yourself or right. prove yourself or anything like that. You're just like, oh, cool. You know? Mm-hmm. So question, if somebody wants to go deep fast and, and get, fix this now, how do they reach the self-love course. Oh, that course is uh, nickhansinger.com forward slash love yourself. Love yourself, one word? Yep. Okay, that's yeah. great. And just maybe one tip on where they start with the guilt and shame. Guilt and shame. Um, maybe just acknowledge it. Bite right? your tongue. Bite your tongue. Yeah, well, you can acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes shame is a little hard to put your finger on, mm-hmm. um, particularly because it's been hanging around for mm-hmm. quite a long while. And so it just seems very normal. Right. So, so it's not always easy to really put your hand on that. Um, but if you have maybe things in your life where you think of a memory and you kind of like cringe or wince or something like that, mm-hmm. you have shame, mm-hmm. you know, like there, there's mm-hmm. definitely shame around that. But, but I would say the easiest and most simple tip and something to play around with is um, stop proving yourself. Yeah. And so what you do with, and stop apologizing is, and that's a good one. Is just you bite your tongue instead. Mm-hmm. Just breathe. Yeah, in everyday conversation. Not really bite your tongue, everyone. Just pause. You're hanging around the water cooler, right? <laughs> and you feel that need to apologize for you know just taking up space or existing. You might just smile <laughs> instead. That's right. You take a deep breath and you oh yeah, and you just don't say that thing, right? Yeah. Uh, or if you get into that kind of proving, yeah, you, you have to just you have to catch yourself in the act and just take a deep breath mm-hmm. and just just stop dead. And I want to give a permission slip here to try that because you will be amazed at how little people notice if you just stop mid-sentence and then segue into something else. (laughs) You'd be amazed. Mm -hmm. Like people don't really, you pick it up with me, Mm -hmm. but that's, I think that's because of our proximity, but I've done this so many times in the wild where I kind of catch myself and then I just take a breath and I'm like, oh, and yeah, it it, it just, they don't even notice. You yeah. Know? So it's like a permission slip. Like, don't worry about screwing it up. Just, you know, when you catch yourself, you really just pause. Yeah. You know, no proving. Right. Justifying, right? right? All that kind of stuff. Justifying yourself. You just stop all that and just, you just bite your tongue. So good. So how to exist around other human beings. Start with respecting yourself because you're going to be giving a lot of loving energy towards you. And when you respect yourself, you can res- you can be around others because you just simply respect them for being in their human jurisdiction. You don't have to like them. You can love them, like like whatever. It's just an easier energy. Yeah, That's, try yeah. try the experiment for the week. Mm-hmm. It, flip the script a hundred percent and just hit the Offer reset button. Everybody gets you respect. get respect. You get respect. Everybody's getting yeah. respect, right? You just you just give that hundred percent respect to everybody and just see how it goes. Yeah, well, cause and effect. Yeah, You'll get it back. Yeah. All right. I love that, everyone. So this is part one of how to exist around other human beings. Please share it with someone who might enjoy or benefit from this. And as always, we appreciate you following us and rating and reviewing and all that jazz in the podcast places. And we will see you next week. Namaste. Namaste. 
Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste.